This episode is sponsored by Manscaped and ExpressVPN. Folks, I know we were all really hoping that our president knew more than the scientists and that hydroxychloroquine was going to turn out to be the magic pill for stopping COVID-19. You know, just keep popping those pills. The virus will never get you. Yeah. It, it was very appealing, but we've got some bad news for you. That does not seem to be the case. Now, first off, hydroxychloroquine is a drug that's been around for a long time. It's been used to treat illnesses like lupus. And turns out, a woman who has had lupus for most of her life and has been taking hydroxychloroquine for the last 19 years, she may still manage to get the COVID-19. But how? Uh, in she her, was doing everything right. In her words, I'm like, how can I be sick? How? I'm on the hydroxychloroquine. They were like, well, no one ever says that was the cure or that was going to keep you safe. And it definitely did not. But the president said. Why would he lie? I don't know. He's been... Completely truthful up until this point. It's just, it's kind of a break of character. It's a shame. Yeah, now, of course, that's just one person, the tiniest possible sample size. Well, a, a couple days after that story broke, the British medical journal Lancet published the largest analysis yet on the risks and benefits of treating COVID-19 patients with hydroxychloroquine, comparing the medical records of around 15,000 patients worldwide who had received hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine and around 81,000 who didn't. And uh, again, it is bad news, folks. It appears that, yeah, it does more harm than good, with a significantly higher risk of mortality and or serious heart arrhythmias. It looks like hydroxychloroquine, it might be a dud. So there's got to be something else. I mean, in my opinion, the scientists and the doctors are lying. And it's because they want to hoard all of the hydroxychloroquine to themselves. Although I'm actually not saying that because YouTube has had a pretty bad uh, track record with we have sarcasm. Very, we have to be very careful. We're yeah. not saying that. No. Okay. We trust science. We got in trouble with YouTube a couple weeks back because they didn't understand what we were saying with sarcasm. So that it, that was sarcasm. Yeah. Sorry. Parody in a video game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so hydroxychloroquine's out. What else have we got? Well, how about llamas? Yes, llamas, the South American long-necked domesticated animals raised for meat and wool, may be the real solution to this mm -hmm. pandemic. Uh, specifically a four-year-old llama in Belgium named Winter. Now, before this current coronavirus situation, there were, of course, SARS and MERS, which are both coronaviruses similar to the current virus. And while a lot of research into those diseases sort of fell off once they were no longer a major threat, one study continued. Now, that study found that llama antibodies, specifically antibodies found in the blood of Winter, the llama, were able to fight off SARS and MERS thanks to being much smaller than human antibodies. They can really get in there. Mm -hmm. uh, from USA Today, years ago, when studying two earlier forms of coronavirus, SARS-CoV-1 and MERS-CoV, researchers found a certain antibody in winter in other llamas could effectively attach itself to and neutralize the virus's spike protein, the portion that attacks other healthy cells. The team has formed a new antibody that shows promise for treating SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, by linking two copies of the llama antibody that worked against the earlier SARS virus. They demonstrated that the new antibody neutralizes viruses displaying spike proteins from SARS-CoV-2 in cell cultures. They, basically, this might work. It might work. Now, well, I'm going to spit in your face. Yeah. What's cool is that these researchers, they just happened to be working on this when the 2020 pandemic struck. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason McClellan, one of the authors of a study published earlier this month about this potential treatment, said, quote, while we were working on this project, the new SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus emerged and the spike proteins are pretty similar between SARS-CoV-2 and the original SARS. We thought that maybe this nanobody, if we isolated it, would also bind to this one. And uh, according to him, if and when these llama antibodies are ready for human use, quote, immediately after injection, they'll basically have immunity to that virus. Mm. It will wane over time after a certain number of months, perhaps, but they become immediately immune. Uh, don't let this get out to America, though, because there's going to be a big attack on llamas. Yeah, it's look like yeah some vampires. hide, hide uh, your llamas. Seriously. I mean, that's cool, though, and hopefully the work does yield results. In the meantime, though, we can probably look forward to lots of idiots Sneaking into llama farms to steal llama blood to just inject themselves. Yeah, we're going to have a whole new chupacabra sort of wave happening. Just like, my llamas! Mm -hmm. Someone came and drained their blood. They were exsanguinated. What could this be? Charlie Sheen has already been seen rummaging through farms, local llama farms. Blood. Yeah. You're going to see it on the dark web. Yeah, seriously. 10 cc's of mm -hmm. llama blood. 
Uh, I mean, it just seems like something that Americans can and will do. They yeah. will break into farms. Now that hydroxychloroquine has been, you know, it's a no-go. It's a yeah. dud. We tried. We looked into it. But no. Llamas. Hide your llamas. The worst part about that hydroxychloroquine thing is that, like people with like lupus. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> I like, need this to live. my pills? I need <laughs> I, my pills. You don't understand. Yeah, I'm doing fine now because of the medication. Yeah. You can't take it away from me. Uh, but hey, listen, there might be a simpler solution than hydroxychloroquine and llamas. Weed. Mm. Yeah, we've all heard from a stoner friend at one point or another about how cannabis is the only medicine that anybody really needs and how it can treat just about any illness, major or minor. Now, the jury is still out on that. There, there's some things it definitely mm-hmm. helps with. But to be fair, yeah, cannabis, it, it has shown itself to be effective in some purposes, like as an anti-inflammatory. Yeah. And for uh, getting you high. It I mean, just does get you high. proven to get you high. Unless you just have CBD, which is yeah. also fine. If you do enough of it, <laughs> you'll feel something. A gallon. Anyway, according to a new preliminary study out of Canada that has not been peer-reviewed yet, cannabis may have potential uh, to prevent the virus from ever even infecting you in the first place. Have any stoners died yet? Do we know? Yeah. I mean, there was that whole thing about how, like, in China, they were noticing that most of the people getting sick weren't, uh, didn't smoke cigarettes. There was, yeah, uh, I saw another study that was Some like, weird shit uh, nicotine might have been a, don't start smoking, though. I just quit. I'm a, I'm a week free of the nicotine. Clean. Which be, and if I get sick now, we'll all know yeah. what the deal was. Mm-hmm. So there you go. But yeah, I mean... We don't know, but it's, it's intriguing. Uh, researchers at the University of Lethbridge up in Canada, they've been studying more than 400 strains of cannabis, and they think at least a dozen or so of those strains might be effective at reducing a person's virus receptors, which reduces the chance of catching a virus. But one of the researchers, Dr. Igor Kovalchuk, told the Calgary Herald, a number of them have reduced the number of these virus receptors by 73%. The chance of it getting in is much lower. If they can reduce the number of receptors, there's much less chance of getting infected. If you're wondering which strains those dozen uh, or so strains that show premise are, well, they don't say. Bastards. But, yeah, but it sounds like they're focusing on high CBD sativa strains. So. You can, uh, you know, go and narrow that down. Yeah. Little, little, uh, little scavenge party. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, test try it out for yourself. If, try it's them le- all. if it's legal in your state or decriminalized. Even if it's not. Yeah, it's like uh, what, it, what, you're going to have fun testing it out anyway. Yeah. Also, we really need to stress here that, yes, this is preliminary research. It could end up leading nowhere. Everyone's looking for something yeah. right now. And even if cannabis is effective at stopping viruses, we probably won't know for a very long time. Cannabis is uh, still an illegal drug up until pretty recently. And that means that scientists are kind of still in the dark ages about the benefits that it can be capable of. And I mean, a lot of states here, it's still illegal and they're yeah. not, you know, getting a bunch of funding for research for it. So. Yeah. If there hadn't been an entire century of treating cannabis like a deadly narcotic, like the worst thing in the world, we'd probably have a much better idea of uh, all of its uses as medicine by now. But alas, that's that's not the case. Yeah, great. But uh, yeah, I mean, the cool thing here is, you know, unlike hydroxychloroquine, which can like make your heart just start going crazy. Yeah, it could have a negative effect. I mean, cannabis is... Yeah, cannabis, you know, where's the harm? Smoke them if you got them. Yeah, really the only harm is... if you're vaping, the less of the lung problems, but, uh, you know, get some anxiety. But find the strain that's right for you. Find the strain that's right for you. There's, mm-hmm. you know, hundreds of them, and apparently around a dozen of them might stop you from ever getting any virus. It is funny so. that, like, uh, most, except for Colorado, like, a lot of the states that just opened up and, like, we're like, all right, everything's back to normal. Bunch of states, the, all, they're the ones that outlaw cannabis. Yeah. Meanwhile, in California, stay inside, but you can smoke as much as you want. And New the weed York, stores are open. New York, though, no cannabis. I think they have medical, but that's about it. Yeah. I think uh, things could have gone a lot better if they had uh, we'll have to look at it. We'll have to look at Colorado, because they opened around the same time as, like, Georgia and Florida. Yeah. But uh, also legal weeds, so. Yeah. Well, anyway, speaking of unorthodox and completely unverified medical treatments for coronavirus, we joked recently yes. about how, since there's evidence that coronavirus is stored in the balls, men should... Uh, uh, Parody, don't do this. <laughs> Sarcasm. Dip their balls in scalding hot water to stop it. Obviously, do not attempt that. It's yeah. a joke. YouTube. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, if you're looking to give your ball sack the spa treatment for whatever reason it might be, uh, we were recently made aware of a product that lets you do just that. The testicuzzi. It's a jacuzzi for your testicles. 
Yeah. Uh, the, the test of Koozie appears to have been debuted as a product sometime in 2019, long before our current hardships. And uh, yeah, it's literally just a little tiny bathtub that you fill with hot water. You, you turn on the bubbler to get the jets going. You, you dip those, those nuts in. You know. <laughs> I want to dip my balls yeah. in it. You do all that, and baby. Your nuts, they're hot tubbing. Yeah, it's even got a little cushion there for your <laughs> gooch, I guess, or your dick. Uh, we're not sure which direction that you're supposed to approach the test <laughs> yeah. from. Uh, but uh, yeah, it looks like it's a cushion for your dick. So that's good to know. Um, hey, at least it's battery powered uh, as opposed to the alternative, which would involve dipping your balls in an appliance connected to a wall outlet. No, pass. Uh, as for why you'd want to test a koozie, well, uh, they do mention on their website that doctors recommend warming your nuts before doing a self-exam for lumps. So this is a way to do that. I would suggest maybe the shower. Yeah, uh, I, just anything else. Everything that I've heard seems to point towards exposing your balls to very hot water for long periods of time. Not great for your sperm count if you ever no. want to have kids. No. That's why I'm, I'm currently worried. Like, did all of my years of carefree hot tubbing do me in? Yeah, am I gonna reckless be able to have, hot tubbing. Am I going to be able to pass my name down? You didn't think about the consequences. I'm never going to be able tubbing. to monetize my son or daughter Start doing on cold, YouTube. Cold tubbing. Because if he kills sperm, well, the cold, cold must must increase the sperm count. Yes. I'm okay. not a scientist, but it seems, seems well, legit. Come out with a little testicle ice bath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the testacuzzi apparently retails for $69.69. Of course it does. Uh, and at some point, there was a 24 karat gold model on sale, though it is currently <laughs> supposedly sold out. Yeah. Uh, in fact, it looks like the whole product line is backordered right now due to coronavirus. Uh, whether that's because dudes aware of the whole coronavirus is stored in the balls beam are buying them up to actually dip their balls in it. Bad idea. Or for other reasons, I don't know. The test jacuzzi, it is certainly, undeniably, a product that exists. Impress your friends with it. Mm -hmm. Moving on now, uh, let's check in on the Weekly Weird News rogues gallery here. Uh, the guys, you know, who just can't keep it normal. The guys that we've managed to talk about for years now. Now, on that Mount Rushmore of weird, you will find the face of Mr. Martin Shkreli, who gained infamy years ago for being the young pharma bro behind a pharmaceutical company who dramatically raised the price of a drug, uh, who also then went on TV a bunch of times to bask in the hatred uh, that his decision generated, just loving it. Yeah. Now, aside from being the face of pharmaceutical greed in America, though, uh, Shkreli also apparently did a bunch of shady shit with other people's money which he may have actually gotten away with if he hadn't made himself so famous with that whole drug price hike. Whoops. Yeah. Anyway, as it stands, Screlly has been in prison for securities fraud for over two years now. Time it, flies. Yeah. But he's still got three years left to go on that sentence. Mm -hmm. He could, he'll probably get out earlier for good behavior, but that's his sentence so far. But uh, yeah, the current coronavirus pandemic, it, it presented a unique opportunity for Screlly and his lawyers that they, they simply could not pass up. He might be a sociopathic piece of shit, but no one can deny that Martin Scarelli is a smart guy who knows his pharmaceuticals. America and the world need a cure right now. And uh, back in April, Scarelli co-authored some research from prison about a potential treatment for the virus. And he asked that he be released temporarily for three months so that he could work on it more. This is important research, obviously. Mm -hmm. Well, it's sad news for Shkreli fans out there because that request for temporary release has officially been denied. Damn. Uh, according to CBS News, quote, U.S. District Judge Kiyo Matsumoto said in a nine-page ruling Saturday that the man known as the Pharma Bro failed to demonstrate extraordinary and compelling factors that would require his release under home confinement rules designed to move vulnerable inmates out of institutions during the pandemic. And yeah, while prisons have been some of the worst hit places for COVID-19, Shkreli's current prison in Pennsylvania has reported zero cases of COVID so far. And yeah. it's probably because he's there. He's doing the testing on the he, other prisoners. He's given everyone all the right doses of, you know, he knows his shit. We don't. So I, I'm sure what he's doing is <laughs> really good. Yes. Anyway, Judge Matsumoto also apparently felt that Shkreli's promises to potentially cure the virus were maybe a bit overstated. <laughs> uh, again, from that CBS article, Shkreli wrote that his background as a successful two-time biopharma entrepreneur, having purchased multiple companies, invented multiple new drug candidates, would make him a valuable asset. Matsumoto rejected that, relaying concerns of probation officials that Screlly's claim that he could develop a cure for coronavirus that so far eluded the best medical and scientific <laughs> minds in the world working around the clock is delusional self-aggrandizing behavior. <laughs> Your sentence just got 10 times longer. You fucking asshole. Yeah, you cocky son of a I bitch. I find you guilty of the sin of pride. Wasting my time. Yeah. 
Now, another weekly weird rogues gallery character that we need to check in on uh, has a very different approach to the pandemic. Just send everyone back to work and let the chips fall where they may. We're, of course, talking about Elon Musk, who successfully played chicken with the local government where one of his factories is and won. Well, Musk's initial claim that he was ready to leave the state of California entirely, it did not fall on deaf ears. In fact, it spurred cities and states across the country to grovel at his feet for the next chance, for the chance to have the next Tesla factory in their towns. Shameful. And uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma has really gone all out trying to woo Musk into town. So a statue in Tulsa, the Golden Driller, which stands 75 feet or 23 meters tall and has stood in front of the Tulsa Fairground since 1966, uh, it was recently repainted with its Tulsa belt now reading Tesla. Shameful. Along with a big old Tesla T on the chest and, most egregious, the face <laughs> repainted to look like Elon Musk. Pathetic boo licking. Now, on the one hand, it is cool to see a monument to the oil industry repainted for the sake of electric cars. And as we've been saying, if Elon Musk's weird pivot to the right manages to get Republicans on board with electric vehicles, it might end up be all being worth it, mm -hmm. to a degree at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, holy shit, does this statue look terrible. It looks like a beige serial killer killed Elon Musk and stretched his face out and now is wearing it as a mask. The Tulsa electric car mask. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's the angle. But I mean, all these photos are from the ground. That's the only way you're going to see it. Get these people a cherry picker. Yeah, I mean, look, Elon loves being loved. I think it's his prime motivation. Mm -hmm. I think he's... Maybe one of the most insecure rich people on earth. He's got to be. So this horrifying statue, it might just pay off. But God, is it ugly. <laughs> Elon the Redeemer, coming <laughs> soon to a town near you. It's like, I've seen Paul Bunyan statues that yeah, look yeah. less horrifying than this shit. Yeah. And it's instead of Paul Bunyan, it's uh, Elon standing next to a, a small Tesla. Yeah. Smaller by comparison. Uh, blue, the Tesla yeah. that could. With a bunch of pancake syrup all over it. Mm -hmm. Is your town pathetic enough to grovel at Elon's feet? Probably. Uh, anyways, another Elon news. NPR ran a story this past week about a woman in Northern California who, by a cruel twist of fate, seems to have Elon Musk's old phone number. Uh, the author of the article actually came across her while trying to reach out to Musk for comment about his threats to sue Alameda County and just decided to look into this further because not a lot going on yeah. outside of the coronavirus. <laughs> Why not? 25-year-old Lindsay Tucker lives in San Jose and has apparently been getting calls and texts intended for Elon for years but didn't even know who he was. From the article, quote, I asked my mom, hey, I keep getting these text messages. And I was also now starting to get phone calls for this guy, Elon Musk. I don't know who this is. And my mom's jaw just dropped. <laughs> oh, 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 you don't know who Elon is? Mm, mm, mm. He's basically Iron Man if he was real. <laughs> yeah, her mom's just a big Elon bro. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it turns out her number, it's still registered to Musk in various like directories, even though it's been apparently around nine years since he's had that number. Mm -hmm. uh, she says she gets at least three calls or texts every day intended for him on days where he's especially part of the news cycle, which <laughs> happens a lot. Mm -hmm. Her phone just kind of blows up all day, hence how the NPR journalist found her to begin with. Uh, anyways, what's hilarious about this is uh, it's not like she's getting important business communications sent to her. Uh, it's a mix between people who just found the number online and people who legitimately haven't talked to Musk in a decade but had the number originally. And people he's apparently trying to give the wrong phone number to when he meets them and, uh, you know, not to be rude. Yeah, sure my, here's my number. Yeah, uh, here's my number. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Anyways, from the article, NPR reached out to Musk to see whether he knew about his long lost number. He replied with a short email. Wow, Musk said. That number is so old. I'm surprised it's still out there somewhere. Cool. Uh, some of those who texted Tucker said Musk himself provided the number to them, like Elliot said. It's <laughs> a, you know, could be a way to throw him off the mm -hmm. scent. And when NPR asked Musk whether he gave out that number to people he was trying to dodge, he just didn't respond. <laughs> I'll show you how I dodge things yeah. by just not responding. Oh, you, you're going to ask me about dodging? Well, here's another dodge. Yeah. So, yeah, it sounds like Elon Musk is meeting people at parties, getting a little too drunk and friendly with them. And they're like, oh, man, we're having such a good time, Elon. Can I get your number? And he's like, hmm. yes, here's my number. He has two different pockets. One has the real number. One has the mm -hmm. fake one. You yeah. never know what side you're going to get. Yep. Yeah. Crafty. Mm -hmm. That's why he's making the big bucks. Yep, exactly. It's 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 Big brain moves like giving out yeah. the wrong number. Giving out the wrong number. Separates Just him from the rest of us. Letting some poor, innocent woman in Northern California be the receptionist for all the losers that you don't actually want to call. Yeah.
If Elon Musk is good at anything, it's ruining the lives of others. It is. There was, <laughs> yeah. there was but, a, but always through petty bullshit. There was another article this week about um, this like SpaceX facility in like Texas that's mm-hmm. right near a very natural area. And it's like also like kind of a poor area. It's one of the poorest like beach communities in Texas. And like the people there are just like every fucking night they're launching rockets and it's scaring off all the wildlife. Like you, you, it's impossible to live here. Well, maybe you should move to a nicer beach town. Is yeah. What Elon Musk says. <laughs> Why don't you just move to a nicer home? Yeah. I don't see what the problem is. Uh also, yeah, I think this upcoming next week is when they launch real people in a SpaceX rocket. We'll see. Yeah, it, it was already <laughs> delayed once, but uh, yeah. it, I, I'm very excited. I'm going to watch it. But also, the uh, residents of Titusville, Florida are not happy about uh, half the country driving there to see the launch. So, yeah, that's understandable. Yeah. You should probably watch this one from home. You, it's, well... It is cool to see it live. But, uh, yeah. Um, uh, not all of us are from Florida. I, I've never seen a rocket launch. You're missing out. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Anyways, before we get into the headlines part of this show, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Ow! Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Those are the screams I used to make when I would cut myself shaving before I knew about Manscaped. It's just ground beef down there. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jesus. Uh, thank you, Manscaped, for turning my loud shrieks into multiple peaks. Men, start taking notes because Manscaped accidents are finally a thing of the past. No more cuts and nicks with the Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0. This is their third generation trimmer featuring advanced skin safe technology so you can keep those bad boys nice and smooth. No jacuzzi necessary. <laughs> no, a little spa day afterwards. Yeah. But, uh, the Manscaped engineering team spent 18 months perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created. And they just released the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0. And when I tell you this is premium, I mean premium, baby. Mm-hmm. The battery lasts up to 90 minutes, so you can take a long, careful shave. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of the coolest features is the LED light, which illuminates grooming areas for a closer and more precise trimming. And let's not forget about the charging stand. Show your mower off loud and proud, because this intelligently designed stand is a rapid charging dock powered by USB. You need to try this for yourself. So get 20% off plus free shipping with the code WEIRD at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. We will thank you. So, yes, get 20% off plus free shipping with the code WEIRD at manscaped.com. You're going to love you the way your balls will feel it. Yeah. They just said, did they send you a fucking nose trimmer in the mail? Oh, I haven't gotten it yet. I got a nose trimmer in the mail. I was like, all right, cool. I'll use this in 30 years. But it was a nice, I like getting gifts from our sponsors. My, it's very my nice. My nose hair is becoming a problem. So. Okay, perfect. Well, we'll yeah. get a review from you. Yeah. Anyways, manscaped.com, uh, use code WEIRD and you'll get 20% off and free shipping. Anyway, this episode is also sponsored by ExpressVPN. Being stuck at home these days, you probably don't think much about internet privacy on your own home network. You just fire up incognito mode on your browser. No one can see what you're doing, right? You just go to town. Well, wrong. (laughs) Even in incognito mode, your online activity can still be traced. Even if you clear your browsing history, your ISP can still see every single website you've ever visited. You dirty, dirty boy. (laughs) Uh, That's why when we're at home, we never go online without using ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN makes sure your ISP can't see what sites you visit. Instead, your internet is connected and rerouted through ExpressVPN's secure servers. Each ExpressVPN server has an IP address that's shared among thousands of users, and that means everything you do is anonymized and can't be traced back to you. ExpressVPN also encrypts 100% of your data with best-in-class encryption, and so that way your information is always protected. Use the internet with Confidence from your computer, your tablet, your smartphone. ExpressVPN has you covered on every device. You simply tap one button and you are protected. ExpressVPN is the fastest and most trusted VPN on the market. It's rated number one by CNET, Wired, The Verge, and countless more. So protect your online activity today with the VPN that we trust to protect our privacy. Visit our special link at expressvpn.com slash weeklyweird. You can get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That is E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash weekly weird. ExpressVPN dot com slash weekly weird to learn more. Now, now yes. headline time. Yeah, uh, I'm going to let you take the first one because, uh, well, guys, remember how uh, Joe Biden's running for pre- president? Uh, he is the uh, Democratic, well, presumptive technically, but he, yeah, he's running for president. Yeah. He is uh, the nominee. Well, he is, you know, 100 people ran for president. And Joe Biden came out on top. He is the best of the pack. And if you if you somehow forgot that he's running for president, I mean, it's understandable because they do kind of keep him. Uh, uh, he doesn't come out often. Yeah, but sometimes, sometimes, sometimes he, comes, he out. comes out and he'll do an interview. 
So here's your first headline. <laughs> Biden tells Charlemagne the God, if you don't support me, then you ain't black. I think it was the actual quote. It was like, uh, if you're already having trouble, if you're having trouble deciding who to vote for in November, you ain't black. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I mean, Charlemagne, you know, not the most perfect interviewer, but he was asking, he was just like, look, I'd like to talk to you more, uh, Vice President Biden, you know, because uh, the Breakfast Club, it's, all the hosts are black. It's it's a black show essentially. It's the and show he, where uh, Hillary became the her famous hot quote, sauce, "Hot sauce." It's every my every candidate that goes on there embarrasses themselves. Yes. Kamala Harris embarrasses herself. Mm-hmm. Like, it's Charlemagne. He's just like, oh, I want to talk more about like what specifically you can offer to like black people. What and is your platform? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What what is it that you're gonna do? And Biden's. Just I like, know Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, if you're uh, you can't decide between me and Donald Trump, well, buddy, you ain't black. <laughs> Just it's just incredible. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then he apologized for it, which, I mean, I guess is nice. Good. Uh, but, it's, but it's been but funny, like, Before he apologized, a bunch of his staffers were like, well, obviously he was joking. They're just like all this fucking deflection. It's just like, no, you don't fucking... White people don't get to, t- don't get to tell black people, uh, yeah. you know, whether or not they're black based on um, their uh, political... Leanings. It's just uh, a lot just of excuses. Not something you do. A lot of excuses made all over the cable news channels too. It's so strange. Uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of carrying. It's almost this like if it was water. another candidate that it would have been uh, curtains for them. It's almost as if another, you know, in a bizarro world, if some other, maybe a little more left Democratic <laughs> candidate had said this exact thing. Yeah, it would have been a, you know, five alarm media circus yes. for an entire week. Yeah. But hey, what do I know? Uh, the, the best excuse is just listen. He's old. He doesn't really know what he's saying. Yeah, which is true. But he's also running for president. Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, and look, like, did he offer up his fucking leg hair for Charlemagne to touch? His entire fucking like in his other story. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> his entire platform is just like, look, I'm not as bad as Trump. Yeah. Which like I agree with. Mostly. Did he call like, Charlemagne corn pop at any point in time? <laughs> no, he didn't. But okay, it sounds like they're going to have a follow-up interview at some point, so we can look forward to that. There's still a lot of months before the general, so. Yeah. Remember when I got in a fight with Charlemagne the God on Twitter? It was a misunderstanding. On his part. I was trying to help Charlemagne the God. Well, he no. was coming at me. We first thought that he was stealing our thumbnails. Yes, but it was so a, a person who was stealing out. his comment. We called videos. him out. He's like, I don't know what the fuck this is. I don't go on YouTube. Yeah, this is before The Breakfast Club was on YouTube. So he was just like, I don't know. But yeah. You turn, can't make money on YouTube. It turned out some, some other channel was just re-uploading Breakfast Club audio to YouTube. And using our and thumbnails. using our yeah. thumbnails. Yeah. And, uh, you know. Not long after that, Breakfast Club started uploading to YouTube. So I'd like to take yeah, some you're credit welcome. for that. Yeah. They're probably making so much fucking probably. money. Probably. And meanwhile, they're making all this money, and I was this close to being donkey of the day. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never be donkey of the day. Oh, God. Anyway, let's move on. Joe Biden's donkey of the year because he's a Democratic Party. No. Well. Yeah. A man who wore a watermelon on his head while stealing from a convenience store has been arrested. Yeah, he just hollowed out a watermelon. That was his... Uh, his mask, I guess. I guess with the what pandemic, a waste of a watermelon. With the pandemic, all the like good robbery masks have yeah. been taken by non-robbers. It's kind of fucked I up. I can't find a robbery mask <laughs> anywhere. Yeah. So he he's resourceful. I I would like to think he he hollowed that baby out by ingesting the watermelon. Yeah, one watermelon baller at a time. Seems like a real waste. But uh, yeah, it was actually it was actually two guys with watermelon heads robbing this place. They only caught one of them, but he ain't no snitch, so. The other guy's still at large. You got to respect the guy that got caught and didn't stitch on his friend, though. Well, it's the code. Yeah. Code of the streets. Governor pranked into congratulating Harry Azcraft during <laughs> online graduation. Nice. This Love is, it. Uh, governor, like, Tate of Mississippi. Yeah. He's like that. He's a governor who, he, he's like one of those guys, he's like probably like 55 years old, but he also looks like he might be like 17. Just has oh, that okay. sort of doughy, like youthful old man face. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, in an online commencement, he uh, someone submitted their name as Harry Azcrack, and he said it. Yeah, it's actually very easy to. When I get my hands on you, you son of a bitch! Did he what? get all mo on it? No, he didn't even pick uh, it up. Uh, did, did we talk about this week and all that fucking? Uh, what was it? The governor or senator that did like the commencement speech where he's just like Ben Sass of oh Nebraska. My God. Yeah, was, if you're watching, go find the video. Ben Sass from Nebraska commencement speech. It is awful. It is. It is like. 
It's like every like funny dad you've ever met decided I'm gonna really go for it. I'm gonna finally like give、yeah. stand up comedy a shot, but it's in the form of like a fucking commencement address recorded on Zoom. Yeah, just like it it sucks ass. It's not funny. It's, yeah, it's, it's、uh, bad. It's like、uh, when you see like a cringe compilation and it's like a. A best man speech that just like goes a little too far、yeah. or whatever. It's kind of like that. It's, it's just like it's like, like really xenophobic in parts. Yeah, and also like puts down about like specific yeah, jobs. Yeah, like the humanities. Fuck, like yeah, psychologists, psychologists psychiatrists, it, janitors. Yeah. yeah, incredibly weird. Yeah, it's strange. Go watch yeah. it. Yeah.、Uh, moving on though, Russian coronavirus nurse scolded for wearing bikini under see-through gown. She's trying to pep up the、uh, patients. Well, her excuse was, "I'm too hot." Oh well, temperature she means, right? Well, I you would think,、mm. but yeah, she, the double on tone. I mean, these doctors—they are like, there's、yeah. a lot of layers. It's got to be pretty miserable in there. And so she's just like, I'm too hot. I, I assume the I AC in to, Russia isn't great. Yeah, so she, she's wearing this clear poncho thing, just you know, bikini underneath, probably making a lot of patients pretty happy. Yeah, I don't see the problem.、No. If she's doing her job right, who cares? Let them die happy. Yeah, if I'm dying in a hospital, I want to see a. Want to see? Why don't you skin, give us a full three sixty? I'm、yeah. about to I'm about to check、does. out. What's、yeah. the, I, where's the harm? <laughs> Point out where what is wrong with this? You know, nurses used to be hot. <laughs> <laughs> We need to bring back the hot nurse. Yeah, this is like a whole like fetish for、yeah. a long time. It's、mm-hmm. gone. It's it's gone by the wayside. They put too many buttons on the on the,、yeah. the nurses.、Outfits. They started letting men be nurses.、Mm-hmm. Total boner killer. Yeah. They started putting <laughs> them in these just like you know shapeless nurses outfits. Set nurses Parody. satire. <laughs> Nurses、Ew. used to wear thigh-high tights and a skirt that's somehow above the tights. Yeah, with white fishnets. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what happened. Parody, satire. When did nurses、We're, get so functional? We respect our medical workers. Over in Russia, the hot nurse is still a thing that happens. Yeah. Yep. Where my country gone? <laughs>、uh, oh God,、uh, we gotta stop. <laughs> okay. Dutch official advice to single people: find a sex buddy for lockdown. Oh, those Dutch. The Dutch very open-minded.、People. Knock those clogs together. Yeah, one of the first places where cannabis was easy to obtain. Prostitution mm-hmm. legal. Mm-hmm. Mushrooms, although I don't think you can get mushrooms anymore. But for a while you could, and I went there and I did, and it was great. <laughs> cool.、Uh, but well,、uh, yeah, they're just like, hey, look, we're all lonely. We're all losing our minds a little bit. Like, figure something out. They don't have to be someone you're romantically interested in. But if everyone finds one other person to just sort of fucking get it over with, like, it's fine. You're, you know, you might spread the virus, but It's a lot less risky than everyone going insane at home or everyone just like fucking a bunch of people. Find、yes. one person,、yeah. and you are your one and only sex buddy during lockdown, and that's it. You know, enjoy it.、Have、seems、fun. fair. It、yeah. seems like a nice, fair compromise. Thinking like the Dutch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Priest uses squirt gun to shoot holy water and fight against coronavirus. Pictures of this are so funny. Yeah. This is priest. Just people are driving up because. Churches are closed. Yeah. Like, can I? Not anymore, be, though. Can I please be? Yeah, I know. Essential <laughs> services, baby. So people are driving up to get blessed, and he's just got this little like ninety-nine cent store squirt gun. He's just firing it into cars. Yeah. He, this man is on the front lines of the spiritual war against the pandemic, and、uh, his gun's blazing, baby. I can't wait to see so many like church signs that just on the front it says like the real essential service is inside eleven a.m. and eight a.m. on Sundays.、Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's probably a sign that exists somewhere in America right now.、Mm-hmm. Take a picture of it, send it to us. Twitter.com/slash/internettodaytv. <sighs> yeah. Next headline: Missouri penguins enjoy morning of fine art at local museum. The fucking the animals are living it up while、yeah. the humans are in cages I don't, now. I do not understand this. It sounds like the zookeepers were just like bored as fuck because they're you know they're taking care of these animals. Yeah. And they're just like, you know what, the penguins would really like a, a free trip to the local fine art museum. Not、Didn't, not for us, the penguins. Was it the, the penguins that they di- took the penguins around at the Georgia Museum or whatever, and the penguins got to see all the animals? Maybe they love people. I don't know. But this 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 story is hilarious. All these pictures of penguins just standing in front of paintings, just like, yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. Well, this is pretty good. You know, I'm so, I'm sick and tired of the animals having the freedom and the humans being in cages. Yeah, I thought this was America. Yeah, animals get eat, humans do the eating. I didn't claw my way personally to the top of the food chain to watch some、yeah. penguins enjoy a nice day out in an art museum. It ain't right. It ain't right. In other penguin news, Antarctic penguins release an extreme amount of laughing gas in their feces. It turns out. So if you're looking to get high, a little bit of the old nitrous oxide,、yeah. just find yourself an Antarctic penguin and just 
Just shove that nose in that penguin butthole. That's why these people took it to an art museum. They're like, they're, they're, these penguins, every time we show them a piece of art, they think it's hilarious. Yeah. They just but yeah, these, like, these doctors looking at these penguins, they're like, you'd have to like air out the room. Like doctors were getting high studying this penguin shit. Yeah. It's, uh, it's incredible. So well, good to know if you're yeah. ever in Antarctica and around a penguin who happens to be taking a shit, just go on cloud nine for like i wonder if you could order penguin shit from antarctica probably, sounds like a good business probably yeah start that business woman in china sends a thousand kilograms of onions to ex-boyfriend to make him cry what a loser yeah and he what he, a waste of money he was like <laughs> news story they're like they talked to him and he's like well yeah the reason we broke up is because she was like a little bit dramatic just like kind of over the top oh you yeah. don't you don't say you don't say hmm well Public yeah. opinion finds her guilty. Yeah, look at the, oh man, he's really going to miss her now, now that they broke up and she sent like an industrial amount of onions to his house like a fucking lunatic. Yeah. Great job, lady. I'm sure he really misses you now. Did they print her name in the newspaper? They should have to warn future suitors. I don't think they did, but they should. Everyone gets a sex buddy, but don't go over to her place. Not her. Mm-hmm. She's a clinger. <laughs> She'll send produce to your house. Unless Lots you love onions. I mean, I love onions. Yeah. Uh, a thousand kilograms of onions would take a while to go through, but I would find a way. Most versatile vegetable around. You can cook onions so many different ways. I eat them raw to prove how manly I am. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. It's uh, my <laughs> testosterone. It's through the roof. Yeah. Mayor lies in coffin and pretends to be dead coronavirus victim to avoid arrest after breaking curfew rules to go drinking. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work. They caught him. But uh, Oh, I'm dead in here. Yeah, this is in like South America, Peru, I think. And uh, yeah, there just happened to be coffins nearby. Probably because of all the deaths. Yeah. He went and laid down in there. He's like, but they, they caught him because he was wearing a mask and normal. Why clothes. do you need a mask? Um, because. Wait, he just talked. He oh my dead. God, I'm alive. No, it's you got a me. miracle. You got me. Adult film star Ron Jeremy fighting to save Tree outside his childhood home in Queens. And the picture really says it all. He just loves this tree. He's just like, no! Yeah. Please, no! Well, his parents planted the tree on when the he day like, he was born. Yeah. On his birthday, it's, this tree has been alive as long as him. And it was recently designated by New York City uh, you know, Department of whatever mm-hmm. as uh, being cut down. He's, he's not down with it. Well, I mean... He's got a bit of a... You know, even if this tree goes away, he's got his own tree trunk that, you know, will live on. Yeah. His penis. Yes. His ridiculously large penis. <laughs> but so, I hope I hope for his sake that uh, he's brought enough awareness to his giant yeah. trunk that... Uh, they Can you imagine being the family that lives there now? Just being like, is that Ron Jeremy? Mm-hmm. Outside of our house? Hugging yeah. that tree? Porn star Ron Jeremy? Yeah, actually, they planted that tree the day I was born. Honey, we got to plant a tree the day our son's born. Yeah. If you plant a tree the day that your son's born, a huge dick. A huge dick. Huge dick. Yep. North Dakota candidates with same name running for same political position. I feel like this has happened a lot. So bo- both of these guys are named Ben Hansen, and it's especially weird because they're both gingers. Mm-hmm. They kind of look like a before and after pic of like growing a beard or shaving a beard. <laughs> nice. Like, uh, and they're both in the same party. Like, I don't know how the North Dakota. They should run it together. Co-op it. Ben Hansen and Ben Hansen. Mm-hmm. The yeah, Hansons. I, I don't know. It's funny. Yeah. yeah, they're both in the same party. North Dakota, I don't know how it works, but if they both get enough votes in the primary, like they they might both end up in the North Dakota legislature together. For the how same do you know? Area. Are they going to put like a little beard symbol on the voting sheet? I think they're using like middle initials. Okay. But, uh, All right. Yeah, pretty interesting. Yeah. And final headline, take it away. Nearly 200 people arrested. Two shot during Go Topless Jeep Weekend in Texas. Yeah, this was a... Uh, this was that clip that was floating around of just all those people out there on that beach in Texas, just like, just wash your hands, put the Germax on. Yeah. And the cops are just like, yeah, there's no way. I'm there's literally anything. no way we there's can enforce like, anything. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> My yeah. hands are tied. This is, I think it's like Boulevard Beach in Galveston. Like the best explanation They're I saw. They're launching rockets all <laughs> night. You think you can come out here and tell me how to live? The best explanation I saw was like someone on Twitter said, Galveston is the Florida of Texas, mm-hmm. and Boulevard Beach is the Florida of Galveston. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah, but, it makes uh, a lot of sense. I lo- the, the, just by their like dialect alone, very, very Florida panhandle-esque. Yeah. Real Destin stuff. They like, uh, 
they like topless jeeps. They yeah. like getting drunk on the beach. PC beach. They do not like social distancing, and they like shooting each other in the chest sometimes when things get heated. Yeah. But hey, probably um, because someone wasn't social distancing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a lot of arrests. Like it didn't seem like that big of a scene. I don't know. Maybe I didn't get a wide shot of it, but like two hundred arrests. That's seems like a lot no, for a local beach. When everyone was all tucked away at home, they, the cops couldn't meet their quota and get those tax dollars rolling in. So that's true. They were like, hey, well, well, everyone's out here to get the lasso." Cha ching. Yeah, we got our budget for the next year. Nice. Anyways, that's it for this week's episode of Weekly Weird News. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, please watch our episode where we talk about the Justice League and how we were right the whole time. Yeah, sorry. Um, a lot You're of people welcome. Are angry in the comments section, and you could be angry too. It's yeah. an emotion. It's Get fun mad. To have emotion. Feel something. Uh, also, most our most recent episode of uh, Tech News Day, where the biggest thought on everyone's mind, including mine after seeing it, is where does Phil get his money, and when can I have a home? <laughs> Damn, Phil. Look at that fucking house. He's got a very nice backyard. I've been there a few times. Uh, I haven't great. been there yet, but it looks nice. Yep. Anyways, check those out, and we'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.